Okay, can you hear me now? That looks to be working now. Don't know why. It says it was picking up my microphone. But I could see that actually the it wasn't picking up the sound. So I just went back in, selected the same microphone. It seems to be working now, so let me know. And thanks for letting me know, homie. Yeah, perfect, awesome. All right, so, sorry, what I was saying was that I'm gonna start something new this week. And also, welcome, everyone. Uh, and make sure and say hi in the chat. I like the, I like the chatting away, which is so, yeah. Let me lower this down a little bit, because this is good. So, um, let me just get this one, I don't like this one. Um, I have this render from last week's sculpt where we finished up um, Hellboy. And I added a small little bit here and there uh, just to break up the, the, some parts felt a little bit empty. Um, I, if I remember correctly, so I, yeah, no, I added, I fixed up the beads, uh, which I said I'd do and just basically took a little bit more time with it and then uh, I did these little um, like I did uh, shin guards kind of shin guards on them so I'm going to show you here this is like day one on doing some texturing stuff on them uh, and I just did a quick render um, with a um, I'll just show you this. So this is far from finished. But just to give you an idea of where it's gone from the sculpt that you've seen in ZBrush and now adding on like you know textures and so on. So some a lot of it's not done yet. So you can see like the cat, I haven't done anything with the cat there. Uh, the hand the detail that I'm getting on the hand is good, but I want to the, the 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 hues are a little bit off or not probably more of a value thing with the that, that brighter red uh, so i want to get that down a little bit add some more detail like um height detail to the skin obviously later there'll be like subsurface scattering involved uh, you can see here just um there's like shing these like shin thingies on them um yeah so and then obviously i'll add like uh, I, I might even do it with like a i might even do it with a um simulation do uh smoke coming from the cigar and i guess steam coming from the coffee and obviously this is just this this background is just a hdri it's not it's not actually what's going to be in the final image at all and um, but yeah so just to give you an idea of if any for any of you guys who watched the stream last week or anyone who haven't obviously it's on pixelogic's channels you can go back and watch it if you want to uh, there's a few there um work through the hellboy sculpt all the way from <clears throat> the initial head and then i sculpted the body on a separate stream and went on did the coat and everything and um, i can't remember now if i did the like i did the, i added this like fluff um, to the outside of the jacket it's just jail um, I can't remember if I did that on stream or not now but anyway I added that um, and did I do anything else I think that's it I think that's everything so yeah you can see just adding adding in those textures and really you know it's, it's good to be it's good to look at them to look at the difference because sometimes when you're sculpting you don't want to over detail at the sculpting stage because that area you know because in the sculpting you're looking at a grayscale and it looks flat or whatever it looks like it's lacking detail there but once you go into texture you're going to add detail there anyway so it's a good thing to, to kind of think about and realize if you're going to be texturing at some stage um yeah, so this, I'm looking forward to, I, I really got 
you know a second wind of excitement about this one as i was texturing it because there's still plenty more to do there so yeah quite happy with how he's turning out and um, considering this is very this is like very early on in the texture stage so and he's like for me he's already kind of looking cool so um with everything else added in after he should be pretty cool so yeah uh, we're going to do a new we're going to start with a new sculpt so we have this guy here from Corey Smith. If you don't know Corey Smith, you can check. That's his. Um, that's his Instagram. So you can check him out with that. Um, and this is one of his. And both just to take a break from doing the designs um, myself, and just because I really like this, I like the big big clean curves and angles and the chunkiness of like the the pieces on the the vest and the big belt and stuff so i uh, thought this would be a really fun one to do um so we'll get started on it let's see um catch up with the chat hey Graham glad you finally joined uh, Harry F hi uh, Zate 3D how's it going and uh, Graham you have a question okay so uh, to texture do you have to be topo or how do you go about that uh, no um, it's kind of so to texture you don't have to retopo you can decimate so okay how do i just explain this uh, i tried to do this really quickly so say you know you have multiple subdivisions so say this is my lower subdivision and that's my highest subdivision so if i go down to the lowest subdivision and you know it's not obviously um Retoppled manually, it's just Ziri mesh. Um, and I just go into UV Master and unwrap. So this is unwrapped now. And then once I'm up at this high level detail, whatever, with all the bits and bobs in it, um, I can go into decimate. This is all just under Z plugin, which is here. I just have a docked on the side here. Um, decimation Master, keep UVs, and then pre process it and decimate it and I can so I can either do that which I'll do on certain pieces um, or the other option is oh, sorry uh, the other option is go to like this level where you know it's not too dense and I can it's not too dense but this is this is too low this is not gonna hold the same shape at all um, so something more like this that at least in silhouette looks similar to this and this is UV and I can export that as like my retopoed version if you like um, and that's you know imagine this is all multiple pieces of whatever character um, and then I can export that and then I can decimate this just for the sake of keeping it a little bit lower poly and use that as my high high res in substance painter or whatever and bake my normals and stuff off of that and get that you know get all that nice detail that you had done on the lower lower poly then in the in your normal maps or displacement whatever um so you don't have to retopo you don't actually have to in terms of like when you say retopo to me that means uh you know production ready animation topology kind of thing so you don't need to do that
that makes sense. No worries, Graham. A three X Tiggy. It's been a while since I just sculpted based off someone else's 2D. So it should be kind of nice to just relax and let someone else think about the design. Just for a change. I Generally, I prefer to, to do my own, to come up with my own characters and stuff, to some extent at least. Um, like the Hellboy you started with, I was just going to do a bust, <coughs> uh, which was based on uh, 2D that I found on I think Instagram or Pinterest I think um, and after a while I decided once I had done that because uh, I was thought it looked kind of cool I decided to keep going with it and do the whole body uh, which at that case at, in, at that point then I have a bunch of stuff to design because I have to do the whole costume and body shape and all that good stuff so so I'm quite escaping on that one. And then yeah, a lot of them before that have been my own my own stuff. Which like that I love doing. Um but definitely there's kind of well, there's a lot less pressure I guess. When you're not designing yourself. Um. So. Yeah, so I I I like designing my own characters, but it can be nice just for a change, just to you know chill out and just sculpt something that's already ready to go. I can just think about sculpting. Know, I'd lower down the music there and let me know if it's too low or too high or yeah, what it is. Kind of might just sculpt it at the angle it's at in the image and then straighten it out. So the usual process, I'm like breaking up the head into like the cheeks and jaw and then the cranium up the top. drawing like the bony landmark if you like so I know where that's sitting keep this relatively straight out here this is gonna be a really what's nice about this is it's a really nice mix of like planar kind of almost shapes with details then peppered in between to break it up which is what I think I love most about it it's not it's not all planar and all really simple forms There's some nice little details in there that break up those forms which I tend to prefer um, Abraham, I was reading comments like literally three minutes ago. So I do read them. Um, but I need to also scope too. 
Hey Sarah, welcome back. Uh, I'm doing pretty well actually. Thank you very much. How are you? I had a nice day today, I have to say. A nice day at work. Followed by a nice dinner. And I had the radio on at dinner and Nirvana were playing on the radio, which never happens here. I was like, today is my day. And uh I get to sit and do some sculpting, chill out, chat to you guys. So we're winning today. Um, is that a cyberpunk model? No, no. It's a uh, yeah, just a design that was done by Corey Smith. It's not. It's not from a game or film or anything like that. Um. Derek, hey Paul, Hellboy has turned out great. Looking forward to seeing the mix of textures. Also, thanks for sharing Corey Smith. His artwork is fantastic. Yeah, he's really good. He's really good. Um, he's one of those artists. Like, there's there's great artists out there that aren't necessarily. Well, depends, I guess, on the what you want to sculpt. But, you know, for me, Corey Smith is, and even though I've actually never sculpted one of Corey Smiths myself, but I've always thought looking at his work like, oh yeah, his his. His stuff is very sculptable, you know. It's very uh, like any one of his characters will be a pleasure to sculpt, and a bunch of other sculptors have done so. Like I know um, Matt Thorup did his Batgirl, and did a really nice job. You can find that on his art station uh, if you haven't seen it before. Matt. Torp, so M A T T T H O R U P. And it is splendid. So I'm thinking the head, the head, and then figuring out around the collar are going to be the challenges, I think, on this one. some of it is a little bit left to interpretation um, good glad to hear it sir am I sculpting on my own today or are any of you guys sculpting along alongside me you guys working on anything hey Jet all the way from Barcelona that's awesome I had a good uh, a good friend of mine I used to work with. Uh, it's from Barcelona. I used to love the way because <clears throat> in Barcelona you have that like kind of um, it's like a drag like S's like Barcelona has like a th in the middle of it. I can't do it because like my accent doesn't allow me to delve into that accent. But I love the sound of it. It's so cool. I was very tempted to try and say it there, but I can't, this is not, it's not, I'm like an absolute show myself. And offend anyone from Barcelona, when I'm at it. Uh, but yeah, I love that, I love that, that accent. That little thing is awesome. Um, Sarah's sculpting along, that's awesome. What are you sculpting, Sarah? Graham is working on Soundwave from Transformers, deadly. Um, Derek Sculpton, let us know what you're sculpting. Um, <laughs> and cheers, cheers, Jay. It's not as exotic. Oh, well, uh, yeah, I, I would say mine's very, I don't know. I guess I, nobody thinks their own accent's exotic. I feel like in places like, though, like Latin accents. I think tend to be exotic, right? I mean, Latin people in general. Um, but yeah, my accent just basically gets everyone, everyone immediately 
anyone who isn't used to hearing my accent will immediately compare me to Conor McGregor. So that's basically all it gets me. Although, being Irish, a lot of people seem to have like a, a fondness for Irish people, so when you go to different countries, you tend to get you know, a, a warm welcome, which is lovely. Graham says, yeah, I'm a Scot living in America and everyone says they love my accent. Like, what accent? Yeah, yeah, that's that's how it is. Yeah, for sure. Do you ever notice people, like, considering you're living in America now, maybe you know other Scots or even anyone from Ireland, England, whatever, that, like, they get to America and they're, suddenly their accent becomes thicker. It's like they, they lay it on. I wonder, I, don't, I do wonder, is that like a, an attempt to sound more interesting or is it like them trying to hold on to their accent? Or maybe a bit of both. Now his head actually tapers out. It's probably something more. The only thing about like streaming or anything that I wish was different was that I wish I could just listen to whatever music I wanted to. Although at some point you just get fed up trying to figure out what you actually want to listen to. It can be nice to just have a playlist of a bunch of stuff you don't notice, so you just you can just let it fall into the background. I don't want to spend, I don't want to get too caught up in getting this right just yet because the jawline and stuff because there's going to be a beard sitting on top so I should really get that in because that's important to recognising the kind of relationship between the volumes that's kind of the most important thing to do right now is to get all the volumes in and then figure out the relationship between them. Because you could sit there playing with the brow for ages thinking that's not right, that's not right. And then you think, okay, now you spend like 20, uh, 20 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes trying to get it right. And then you put in the nose and you realize it's completely wrong anyway. So it's better to just get all the volumes in. As soon as you can. That's why we have Spotify and Apple Music Weekly, that's very true. Well see on obviously when you're streaming you can't listen to like it has to be um uh, royalty free. that to deal with but I mean it's fair enough
Um, where was I? Da -da -da. Um, yeah, I do that. Uh, need to represent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I went to LA for um, what was it called? Um, ah, oh, Lightbox. Uh, the event over in, it was in uh, Pasadena, and I could feel myself doing it. I could feel myself using like these Irish phrases that I never actually really use. But like, well, yeah, you gotta represent, I guess, yeah. I find, and I'd imagine it's similar with Scottish, but it, it depends on what you're like. Obviously, if you're just casually, socially out or whatever, then it doesn't matter. But like, with the, um, you know, if you're over there as an artist trying to, <clears throat> you know, get to talk to people and stuff. Um, you know, for maybe a job or God knows. Um, it didn't dawn on me at the time. It was only in hindsight that I kind of thought, yeah. Um, the owner of the company I work for, um, I work for a company called Giant, and one of the owners in Ireland, and one of the owners was saying to me about when he like obviously he's off he'd be over in LA he's been over in LA and, and the likes of that uh, on a number of occasions and you know pitching something or you know whatever the case may be and because you're Irish there's almost this like um they kind of forget to take you seriously they forget to listen to the business side of what you're talking about and they're just like oh you're Irish you're supposed to be great crack let's go for a drink and they're, they're more concentrating on that side rather than actually just listening to you seriously about like the, what you're trying to portray or whatever uh, and I hadn't really thought about that when I was over there but when he said it to me it was interesting because I did kind of have that experience but I don't think I really realized that's what was happening in the moment, if that makes sense. Like, over in America, do you not just get, like, everyone comparing you to William Wallace? Just everyone screaming freedom at you and stuff all the time. <laughs> or maybe you're screaming freedom at them, that's also possible. I mean, it is a classic. You have to, you have to give it credit where credit's due. You know? Um, more than you know, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Where was I? I actually was. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ward Dermot. Uh, I actually visited Ireland last week. Went hiking around Dublin. Oh, brilliant. Whereabouts did you go? Do you remember the, the names of the places? There's a bunch of uh, lovely places to go in Ireland. Um, Dublin has a lot of, obviously, has a lot of history and stuff there. Um, and then you have places like uh, Kerry and um, Donegal and West Cork that are all just, you know, they're just beautiful parts of the world. Um, oh, the Wicklow Way, brilliant. I've done it myself. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. It's really nice. It depends on the weather, though. But hopefully you got good weather. Um, Amish is doing a bit of sculpting. Fair play. At this point, it'd be good base. Oh, this would be yeah, yeah, it could be yeah, yeah. It could start like 
extracting kind of panels off of this to turn this into a robot head. Feeling witchy, so I started to sculpt off Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Deadly. Oh, from Sweeney Boo, yeah. Yeah, Sweeney Boo is great. Love love her walk. I've probably seen that same same concept. Yeah, you can't go wrong with someone like Sweeney Boo. You know, you're at least starting from a, a, a solid design. Do you know what this kind of reminds me of right now is, you know that, you know the really cool looking robot? One of you guys will know the name, I'd say. Uh, the really cool looking robot from George Dredd. I don't know what it's called. I haven't seen George Jared since I was a kid. And unfortunately, he didn't read comics. I didn't read any comics. There wasn't enough. We don't have... There is comic stores here, but it's like you have to go into the city centre to get them. So it's not... You don't find a whole lot of people that are really into comics here even though they'd be into you know superhero stuff you know they're, in, they're into the kind of comic book themes like myself I loved I like was addicted loved loved Batman my entire life and I think I mean I got one or two as a kid one or two Batman comics, you know, at Christmas or whatever. Uh, just because, like, my family knew I liked Batman, but... Yeah, it wasn't, um... I never, like, collected them or anything. I kind of wish I did. And then I read, obviously, I read the more kind of popular ones then when I got a bit older. Year one, Batman Year One and Dark Knight and stuff. Um, it's safer to do royalty free on Pixel Champ. Technically, the MCA rules Twitch applies only actually count for clips and saved streams. So, if you stream music using multi track to make sure it can be clipped or saved, you should be fine. Oh, well, yeah, on, on, on my own channel, I probably would but and have done but yeah on with pitch logic I'm obviously you know I'm not gonna start arguing with music I don't mind uh, like I said sometimes it's good just to have like kind of more ambient music in the background because otherwise I'd be sitting here I'd be getting distracted going looking for the, a song that I like or whatever because I do that sometimes so I just have to um, yeah find something that'll just you know, some lo-fi playlist or something, something I can that will just kind of sit in the background and not distract me. So it's not the worst thing in the world. But good to know, also though. Cheers. Um. I don't know. It's never said in Scotland, <laughs> but I throw it out there for the Americans. Yeah, yeah, true, right, man. Like you said, you gotta represent. I'd be torn, and I'll just torn words Irish. You know what I mean? Um, like you know, ashed up, and you know, there's like a there's like a certain um, Irish. You know the way certain accents you have that like uh, I don't know 
the likes of French, maybe Spanish. They have that, like, there's like a kind of thing that they do. And there's there's a there's like not that, but there is a there's a weird thing that Irish people do sometimes, where it's really subtle, and it'd be on like, you know, it'd be watch the drink. It's like a double. It's just it's not like a. R, it's just like a. It's like watch the drink. It's like a the drink kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um. You know, if, if you've if you've an old can on the floor and you're camping and someone's standing next to you, yeah, watch the drink. You know, it's just a little that, it's just a little subtle, and you that's that tends to kick in heavier. Same as you hit the air player. Um, I think it's a compliment because everyone tells me. They have Scottish in them. Yeah, 5% Scottish on the great grandmother side. We're all connected. Yeah. Well, uh, like, I used to always think that, because, yeah, I've heard that a bunch of times. Uh, Americans and English people say that to me more than anyone else. Like, I, I've never heard a Scottish person say that to me. No Scottish person has ever turned around to me and said, I'm, you know, this amount Irish or whatever. Even though they could well be. Uh, a bunch of English people have said it to me and a bunch of American people now I know I don't get really how well I know a lot of Irish went to England for a long time and in America is kind of well the same thing in America we kind of spread out for quite a while and America is kind of built on foreigners essentially Um but it it is it is it is funny like how often you'll you'll be told that and i find like i feel like irish people and scottish people are have a similar like there's a similar expectation from irish people and scottish people of that you know we just we love drinking and we love the crack and we love and we're a laugh and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I, I don't necessarily disagree with it either. Like the more time I spend in different countries, the more I kind of see why they think, why they feel that way. Like to me, the Scottish accent and comedy are like bread and butter like the, the the Scottish accent just does comedy probably better than any other accent I think and there's other good ones too but like I, for me just Scottish the Scottish accent <laughs> even even being insult even being insulted by a Scottish person is hilarious even if they're serious So, I remember hearing this, you'll know Billy Connolly. Most of you will know Billy Connolly. Um, if you're at all, if you've ever listened to, if you're into comedy at all. Um, and Billy Connolly is from Glasgow in Scotland. And he said on one of his, he, 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 I didn't notice. He said on one of his uh, stand-ups that actually Scotland was originally an Irish tribe. So, like, a bunch of lads landed in Ireland. They were like, right, we're home. And then one particularly, one especially crazy Irish chieftain took a load of them and said, lads, I know an even rainier place. And they all went to Scotland, and that's when Scotland, that's where Scotland was uh, populated with essentially crazy Irish people. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm ashamed, I'm ashamed, I really am, I'm genuinely, I'm ashamed to say I've never been to Scotland. I've, I've, 
three times I've suppo- I was supposed to go to Edinburgh twice and Glasgow once. And just it just because, you know, sometimes you have plans and they don't end up going, coming to fruition. And that's... I, I have to go. I keep hearing great things about Edinburgh. That it's a, just in terms of like a city. is just a stunning city. And I've yet to go. And I need to fix it. Because uh, it's just getting silly now at this point. Baptised in maple syrup and wear raccoon skin hats. <laughs> I take it you're in Canada then, Sarah. Uh, Canada is another place that I haven't been, but I'm actually hoping maybe to go there next year. I hope so. I'd love to go see, uh, I'm hoping to go see Vancouver. Maybe do a bit of hiking, something like that. Hopefully you don't get mauled by a bear. I hear, I was told, when you go hiking, you have to bring, here, here, now this could be the most stupid thing you've ever heard, right? Because, well, I've no, I've no, no idea what I'm talking about. Um, But I was told, right, in my defense, I didn't make this up, I was told, that when you go camping, in parts of Canada where there are bears that regardless of whether you need to cook anything you need to bring people will bring like frying pans or whatever like pot and pans or whatever because they don't like loud noises so they'll bring like a pots and pans now I don't know why you wouldn't just bring an air horn I was literally specifically told you have to bring pots and pans so that you can bang them and that freaks them out and they'll leave you Unless it's a grizzly. If you see a grizzly, you're mostly gonna just die. Because they're not really much afraid of anything. They're just gonna eat you. Or, well, tear you to shreds, whatever. They're not gonna be happy. How, how, how way off the mark is that, I wonder? Maker JP has been in Scotland for one hour. That's... How do you go to Scotland for an hour? <laughs> I love the ah, ah, Edinburgh. It's beautiful, but it's the snobby city. You really want to go to Glasgow, okay? What? So you basically is you want to have the crack? You want to go to Glasgow? That's see, this is what so because it's, it's you know. I mean, there's no, there's no big city. There is no big city in Ireland, at all. Uh, I mean, Dublin is the closest thing to a big city, and it's absolutely tiny. I mean, you can get pretty much if you're in a car, you can get pretty much anywhere in Dublin within half an hour. Assuming there's not a rake of traffic on the tiny roads that we have. Um, it's part of its charm. But there's. There's, it's the same where there's there's kind of snobby parts and then there's like D4 is considered a snobby part. I would never go out in D4. But yeah, it's hard because it's not, it's not big enough to... And then there's no other city. I mean, there's like... There is other cities, but I mean, they're more... Compared to any other country, they're pretty much just towns. Um, there's Galway, there's Limerick, there's Cork. Then you have Belfast. Um, you have a bit of crack in Belfast. <sighs> they're, they're just kind of different. I'd say if any of them are snobby, it might be more Galway than any of the others. Then again, it's kind of it's a bit studenty. You know those kind of places. But it's nice, it, it looks nice. Galway is lovely, it's by the sea and everything. I 
and there's loads of like live music and all that kind of stuff so you know you know i can imagine a lot of people if they were coming to visit ireland would thoroughly enjoy themselves going to galway seeing galway but it's not necessarily either like if you talk to any irish people and say oh what's the best place to go in ireland i've i well i i have yet to hear an irish person say galway although it is lovely as i said just mm, mm, it's that it's, mm, Who made me force pick? Um, Julian is modeling in Maya and watching, listening to me. Oh, no. very good. Um, hold on, I think I'm lost. Oh, okay, here we go. All right. Um, I did a job I thought was going to take eight hours. I did a job I thought it was going to take eight hours. <laughs> Six hour drive. Spent an hour in Scotland. Well, at least you can say you were there. You know what I mean? Should the conversation ever come up in an elevator? Um, just get some bear spray. All right, okay. Yeah. But like it has to get close for spray. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get that close. I mean, if the bear is that close, then yeah, I'd like to have the spray. But I'd rather the bear be at least, at least, well, the, the further away the better really, but at least six, seven meters. You know what I mean? Enough that maybe I can get to the car or whatever. Probably even would need more than that because I know bears are a lot faster than they look. I've, I've, I've been told that too. Again, I could be talking. Pony there, but... Um, oh, to scare them? Yeah, that would work. Okay. All right, so it wasn't complete nonsense. But mostly... Not discarding food all around is a great preventative move. Yeah. Have I, have I seen somewhere about people like... They bring like a bag that they chuck up into a tree away from the tent and all your foods in that just to make sure to, because if you keep it in the tent because i was told as well um geez, just realizing how much i've been told about canada um that you know you can't leave if, if you live anywhere where there's bears like if your house is somewhere where there's bears and and you come home you park your car in the drive whatever and you leave like sweets in the front seat or something they can smell it out and they'll come like attack you they'll try to get into your car and obviously destroy potentially destroy your car while they bash away at it, trying to get into it um so that's another one i've heard can you can this hard work it looks though I really want to see like the the glacial lakes and stuff in, in Vancouver and what else there was a few other places I seen that looks stunning um, Montreal looks really nice from what I've seen You know what I'm going to do this Bears can run up to 35 miles per hour full speed. Jesus wept. It's death on legs. 
mechanics. Honestly, I, I feel like if I met a bear, I would just, out of pure and utter fear, I'd probably just freeze up. I get, well, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't, maybe like survival instincts would kick in. It's wishful thinking, says you. For now, I think I'm more concerned about just getting like essentially like a placeholder of hair here just to. Understand where the volume is. So I need to figure out how much space, like I can drag this around after a bit and figure out where, you know, it looks like there, I'm going to need to pull this down like a lot and give him a lot more chin. Sometimes I hear songs on these and they're like supposed to be copyright free. I'm like, I know that song. Like I've heard that in two lyrics somewhere. Right? Am I wrong? I feel like I know that song. Um Oh Sean, hey Sean. Um uh, is Dublin still really expensive? I fancy going f out for a weekend or something, but don't want to have to take out a bank loan to get a point. <laughs> yeah, it's still expensive. Uh, you know, if, like, uh, you could still do it. You could still come to Dublin and not, you know, spend a an absurd amount for sure. Um, you know, you could get like a nice B&B or whatever. Um, and just don't go to Temple Bar. Temple Bar is really expensive. Temple Bar is right in the middle of town, in the middle of the city centre. Um, Temple Bar is where, you know, anyone who comes over, any any 
people coming over on holiday they all go to Temple Bar and everyone any companies set up in Temple Bar all know that and so charge them extortionate prices so you know now that said That said, it's expensive regardless. I mean, well, you're talking, you're talking, you're talking five euro anyway for a point. For a point to Carlsberg or whatever. A lot of places now do like the, what you call it? Um, what's that shit? The craft beers, because they're cheaper. And they're also cheaper for the pub to have, cheaper for the pub to get in. Um, but that's not, it wouldn't be my cup of tea, you know. I'd be a big fan of craft beers. get us there for now. Just want the general shape. I'm getting caught up in all this chit chat, I always do that. I'm an awful man. Um I'm in oh Quebec, yeah, so quite at the opposite of Vancouver actually one day I've got to go to oh yeah yeah because I know like like I think the flight from Ireland to Montreal is about the same time as Montreal to Vancouver, I think. Which the first time like I there was a, a guy in the, where I used to work, um where was he from? Toronto. And I was like, oh, what's uh, Vancouver? Like, I, I've been meaning to go over to Vancouver. And he's like, I don't know. I was like, what do you mean you don't know? And he was like, do you have any idea how far away that is? And then it it dawned on me how stupid I was being. Because um, obviously I'm used to living in a country where I can I could drive, I can drive to pretty much anywhere in this country within four hours, like driving. So... It's it's a it's a bizarre thing to me that you know you have to get a you get a flight and still be in the same country. <laughs> but I mean, of course. Uh, Hugh O'Donnell 
I'm from Galway and I've heard it called the Paris of Ireland. That is quite the claim. <laughs> it was you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Ah, I guess I can see that. I guess I can see that. I mean, it is a lovely city. It is a lovely city. No dispute there. It's it's like, um, I don't know. I, I would say it's almost, it's like, everyone loves Galway, but it's nobody's favorite. Ah, I could be talking pony there. I haven't been in Galway in years, but I, I, I have spent a lot of time in Galway over the years. I always loved it. I mean, it's no offence to Galway. I mean, nobody nobody from Dublin loves... Nobody from Dublin loves Dublin. And anyone from Ireland that isn't from Dublin hates Dublin. Because <laughs> I, I think it's something to do with... We have a sport called Ga. Gaelic football. Um, and... Seems to me that most people don't like people from Dublin. Most people outside of Dublin, like other Irish people outside of Dublin, tend to not really love people from Dublin because, well, one, we essentially come down to the countryside like tourists. Um, like, if you stop and ask for directions in the countryside, they'll usually just assume, oh, it's a dub. And the other reason that they don't particularly like us is because our Gaelic football team has a tendency to beat all the other Gaelic football teams a lot. To the point that even I'm sick of it. So, and they call us sunshine supporters, which basically means you only come out to watch the games when the sun's out. Which, yeah, I mean... To be honest, I'm not, I'm not, I don't follow, I'm not really big into Gaelic football, so I'm not going to argue with that either. Um, so, I mean, yeah. Probably the last person you should ask about the nicest places in Dublin, or in, in Ireland, to go to is a dub. It's, it's the gist. But you can't go wrong with Galway either. I was actually going to live in Galway for a while. Before I ever got working in the industry, there's a games, there was, well, was, I don't know if it's still there. Um, a game studio in Galway that um, the owner contacted me, asked me to do a test asked me if I was interested in doing a test and I did and they offered me an internship you're talking like probably, probably 10 years ago and I was gonna do it and but then before before they actually got things in place then I ended up getting a full-time job in, a, in an animation studio um, had I went in there, maybe I'd be working, maybe I'd be working in a game studio right now. Probably in a different game studio, but a game studio. You can actually use, use the snake hook and hold alt. Snake hook and hold alt and go along a mesh. It'll actually follow, you see the way, like even if I go out here, it'll actually follow up the, the surface of the mesh that it's against. So that's handy to know.
Um, where was I? Okay. Uh, when I camped in Yosin. When I camped in Yosemite, we had Yosemite. Is that right? Um, we had bear boxes away from the tent to store the food in. Yeah, okay. So if a bear comes, they're gonna go for the box and not where you're sleeping. Um, yes, it is good advice not to let your food into your tent. It should be hanging in a tree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So basically, just not in the, anywhere but the tent. A big bear can open the car like a. Cause <laughs> there, are plenty of, of YouTube videos. So yeah, okay. After the stream, I'm gonna go YouTube. Bears opening cars. Like a like a tin of sardines. Cause that sounds like a useful a useful use of my time. Um, ba -da -da -ba. So I guess I'm chatting here and I'm not concentrating really on, on a sculpting. I'm doing it, but I'm doing it on like autopilot. It's a funny thing, I've, I've done like, um, I've done live demos before and where like I'm not, I'm not necessarily talking, um, I'm just like, you know, doing, doing the sculpting while someone else is talking or, you know, I did it good while back now for the company I used to work for where we were at an event and it was kind of just to show like here's one of our artists doing the work that we do kind of thing so they were doing like meet and greets and you know everything from like professionals to students to people who I don't know might want to pitch an idea for a, a show or whatever um, short film, something like that, uh, would come over, and um, they, some of them, some of them were coming directly over to me. But for the most part, I was just left alone to sculpt. And uh, so, like, I've no, I've no, I've never had any problem. You know, a lot of people they don't like people to watch them. It doesn't it's like it freaks them out or whatever. And I can understand that why some people are like that. Um, but it's never bothered me, but um, my problem is talking too much, that's my problem. I tell myself at the start of every stream, at right, this time, manage that a little bit better. And then it gets to like I'm an hour in. I'm like, oh, because oh. it's nice. I want to have something. At the same time, you know, I want to have something. I know it's not going to be finished by any means, but there's no way to finish all of it in what two hours. But you know, it'd be nice to have something kind of at least looks a bit decent. And I used to always do. Um, it's good actually to do them. Uh, I used to do kind of like a. like a sculpt off like a, a you know a speed sculpt sculpt off thing and I used to always do really well at that as soon as I'm streaming talking too much I slow right down 
and I know some of you are okay with that once I'm chatting away you are more interested in just chatting but um, I know some people do tune in just to watch the sculpting so I do feel like I'm doing those people at the server sometimes if I'm talking too much it's a balance it's a balance guys that's basically what I'm trying to say to you Ah, JP's in. Hey, JP. How are you, brother? Um, yeah, if you if you if you leave the food in the tent overnight and you sleep there, if some bear came to search, you'll face an unwelcome visitor. Yeah, imagine, imagine. Four o'clock in the morning, you're like, let's go to sleep. What's wrong with you? And you turn around, and it's just, just that you know they do that thing where they just in your just a breath in your face before you even start screaming, you're gone. I don't know. I remember looking up like a, a crocodile has the the strongest bite I think in like the animal kingdom, like across anything. On, on the planet, I think. Oh, I wonder. Surely a whale. Anyway, um, I know, but still, um, I wonder what what a what a like how many pounds of pressure is in a bear boy enough to go through you in a like butter and imagine anyway. Um, uh, Mega GP. Oh. Do have printed that space girl I showed you, then glued the legs on the wrong way. Classic. Yeah, yeah. Um, nightmare. But sure, look. I'm, I'm sure you just, you could, were you able to get it back off and get it working? Um, did Pixlogic reach out to you to become a streamer or did you have to apply? Always was curious about the process. Um, to be honest, well, they... In my case, um, yes, uh, someone from Pixlogic um, reached out to me. Uh, initially, to do the initially, they reached out to me not to do uh, ZBrush Live, but to do the ZBrush Masters series. Um, and then, after doing that, um, I, I don't know how long after doing that, they asked me if I'd be interested in doing zebra life uh, but I'm not sure if that's the, if it's the same for everyone maybe you know I'm not 100% sure
tucking in the tempo, but also adding some volume because I don't want like a big sunken in tempo. I want it to go in and then kind of bulge. I want an overall kind of rounded feel to the head because that's how his head does feel. But there is definitely a sense of the temple. On, on the inside. I heard if you sing bare necessity to a charge and bear stop and join in. That's how you survive. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I'll give that a shot, Graham, and I'll let you know how I get on. In fact, I'll bring the bear. A couple of cans, we'll have a laugh. Um. Tablet? Is it asking what tablet I use? If so, it's a Cintiq 22 HD. Um, uh, Jed is saying, Paul, I wanted to tell you uh, thanks a lot. Uh, because watching your streams, I've learned a lot, especially with Hellboy. Even I've changed my workflow with ZBrush. That's great, Jed. I'm really happy that I helped. Um, thanks for saying so. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm 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 really happy that that's helped you. Um, it's always nice to see. I've seen people like use some of the streams as like they follow along like tutorials and stuff. It's always lovely to see that. Cause. Um, 
and I would recommend it to you guys. Any any of you guys that are you know seasoned sculptors and you, you, you're already in the industry and stuff like that, you should try to uh, you should see if you can um, if you can do that. You know, help people do a little mentorship or just even help someone you know or whatever to learn it's, it's a lot a lot to be said for can it can be um it's it can easily be as enjoyable as the sculpt in itself in terms of like you know it just feels good on this uh, Mike May hello man I uh, hope you're hard working ass doing well cheers Mike and you too man Um. JP is doing fine. This concept looks awesome, by the way. Yeah, good old Corey Smith. Can't go wrong. I'm trying to concentrate on just making sure I have the right proportions, kind of. Which is a little bit trickier because he's like, you know, it's, it's at an upward angle, and I'm obviously sculpting him like this, so I have to kind of use my imagination. His eyes are definitely bigger though. So okay, so this is interesting. So okay, what can I do there? His eyes, his eyeballs are bigger than his head, so I make them way bigger. And just pull them back. See? I don't f rather than flatten them. Uh, that's helpful in production because it depends. Uh, you can work on productions where they're like, yeah, we've, you know, we've rigged eyes ready to go. Then you can bring them in and you can squash them or whatever. Um, but generally they don't always have that. And so it's not probably a good idea to feel like if you, you know, you work with that in one studio or with one freelance job, and then you go to the next one and they don't have that option. And then you're like, well, I don't know what to do with it. Um, you just got to make the eyeballs big and in a production what can happen then is when the character eyeballs are so big that when the character opens its mouth you can see its eyeballs coming through the roof of its mouth that's fine the rigger can fix that they'll fix that with a lattice with what's called a lattice so uh, yeah so just make sure that the eyes are the large and that way the curvature of where of the part that actually extends out into the face will be um, will be slighter now, this guy is a lot more fleshy than I'm giving him credit for And this is going to be probably the hard part because I want to get the nice planes and I don't want to necessarily maybe if I do something like this maybe maybe just something like this instead it will be better
facing a pair Leonardo style like in Revenant yeah exactly what do you reckon your chances are do you reckon like nah I was going to say like the strongest human being like if you took the strongest human being what would their chances be against the bear probably about the same chances as I have I reckon it doesn't really matter Same with like a, something like a gorilla. But it's, it's beyond human strength. And weight as well. That massive paw. Like the size of the... Well, I guess on a grizzly, I don't know the types of bears. I don't know. But like the size of some bears' paws. Like they're the size of your head. like, And then the size of their body, the weight behind that punch. I say a punch. It's like they're also it's just those big claws rip through you. That's it, you're done for. You just hope, I would just, all I would hope if I got attacked by a bear is that the first punch killed me. Do you know what I mean? So I didn't get the the Leonardo the Leonardo style where I'm like trying to crawl away, it's like tearing at me back and bites me leg and I'm like getting tossed around and battered. Or at least that I pass out from the pure like I get such you know I think if you get too much adrenaline that you just bleh, you just flop done at least that even that that i'd take that too um because christ just be a nightmare anything like that shark that's another, I remember that in Billy Connolly as well, where I think he said something like, um, you know, if he was attacked by a shark, he would stick his head under water and inhale deeply and hopefully drown before that shark's jaws came together. And I, I, I would be right there with him. And he told a story um, about a bloke who was on the beach a certain, well was on the beach and went out into the water and uh, a while out while he was swimming a shark latched onto his leg latched onto his latched onto his his, his thigh right from the outside like latched down like my thigh is down here latched onto his thigh and this guy you know I don't know if he was Scottish but it really wouldn't surprise me because that you know, that sounds like a very Scottish thing to do. Um, he grabbed the shark. He's giving it... And he walks out onto the beach with this shark in his arm still locked onto its leg. Locked onto his leg. And the, he's, he's like shouting for help or whatever. The lifeguards come over and the lifeguards get to the point where they can now visibly see exactly what's happening because you know like coming up the beach you see this guy you're like that guy pulling a shark out of the water and then you get close and then you realize that's a living shark and it's latched onto his legs so you know, obviously they, they weren't much help then so they're uh, and he thought well fuck it these aren't gonna help got into his car drove to the hospital Got in there and uh, yeah, walked into the hospital with a shark latched onto his leg. The whole joke was about like, I think it's about the, NH the NHS or whatever, isn't it? Like where he walks up and he's got this shark attached and because the NHS are supposed to be really slow. So she's like, mother's maiden name, please. Um, yeah, it's quality. If, you, if any of you haven't listened to Billy Connolly, go listen to Billy Connolly. I want to, li I want to go listen to Billy Connolly now. I haven't watched him in ages. He's brilliant. Um, but yeah, any, any, anything like that, that's, I know, or like I said as well, like a, a gorilla or something, like I, I just like, oh, like this is not a good way to go. You know what I mean? I, I feel like that's the kind of, this is gonna be a horrific death. Um, I'm, I'm about to be beaten to death like or, and he might like just crush your leg for sorry this is a very <laughs> this is a very morbid conversation now that this has gotten into 
Sorry, I do apologize. I'll stop. I just cause there's a there's a great Instagram page called Nature is Metal. If you've not got a good, if you've got a bit of a queasy stomach or whatever, because it's gory and it, it none of it's like it's just videos of things that happen in nature. But it's the idea. Obviously, nature is metal. The idea is that like it's it's showing you how vicious uh, nature is. So it's like you know. Like for example, there's a video there, and I won't get into, it, but I won't get into the, the real details of it. But it's like a bunch of dogs. It's like a, it's a little chicken. It's on the top of a fence. It's not super high fence, but it's you know about five foot something. Like and it's just a chicken minding its own business on the top of a fence. And there's like four dogs, and the dogs are all looking up and barking at the chicken. And it seems kind of harmless and they're kind of jumping a little bit and then one of them actually jumps and manages to catch the chicken and then it basically pulls the chicken down and the four dogs just rip it in four different directions and you're kind of not ready for it you're kind of not ready for it it's kind of like of course they did but it you know what i mean it, so it's just yeah and there's loads of stuff like that. If you're into that kind of stuff, I find it fascinating to see what, you know, because, you know, I think we tend to portray animals like they've, like they're humans, like they've got that kind of, but they, there's, it's, it's the, the ultimate lack of prejudice. They're hungry to eat. Um, okay. out there. Now we're getting an imbalance in the head. I think that's because we're looking at it from the phone angle. This feels weird to me now. I don't know. Just needs if you, you get this this happens by the way you know this is gonna happen to everybody and it, it's happened to me plenty of times and it always probably happened to me where something feels off and it can just be sometimes the way you started it or some thing you did like something that you you had to work on from the front and then when you turn it it's just making the side look a bit weird or the three quarter or whatever and you're trying to figure it out without breaking the front and so on and so forth. Um, but it happens and you just have to kind of stick with it and trust that you'll find your way out of it, because you will. I feel like it's the nose, because like the nose in this, even though he's so he's looking, you're looking up at him. So you'd expect to see the bottom of his nose, right? Because you're looking up at him. But you don't. So, which means, if I was to follow this concept, which I may have to diverge away from now, and this is where you uh, you have to have a certain amount of like design and, and, and use a little bit, just a bit of common sense too. If he's, if you're looking up at him and you can't see the bottom of his nose, that's because his, his nostril to the tip of his nose, that angle is like way down. So when his, when, and, and maybe from that angle, that one angle that it was drawn or painted from, that's fine. But then when you put the face straight or turn it to the side, you've got this really extreme angle. So you've got some options. You can go with the angle and try and make it work. Um, or if it just isn't working, you can try and change it and just maintain the kind of feel as best you can um, you know you just have to figure out what way you're gonna make this thing work because unless you just want to just get it you know unless you're just gonna sculpt it and make it work from like that angle and, and forget about it from there which I mean I wouldn't recommend it really because 
as much as you can find and some people have done that and to to extremes to where you know it's completely broken when you turn it and that's by choice where they've wanted to make something you know really really graphic into 3d um, and that's fine well obviously but if you're doing a character what you do still have to be really wary of is the fact that the light the light will show you know like you don't have to be from the side to see that this um forehead slopes backwards because the light will show because it will there'll be a gradient across it where you'll have lighter at the top and then as that gradient as that slope straightens the, it will get slightly darker because it's facing away from the light where if the light was above say like straight above and um, so the light's going to give away your shapes so you you don't really want to just ignore other angles it's not going to do you any favors really using a big Damien standard just to pull that edge out like so Damien standard doesn't only have to be for you know, creases and whatever you gotta pull out a big edge so Um, Jace cover all the way from Jamaica. How's it going, man? Or oh, Jace? I actually haven't ever heard that name. I just I have no idea if you're a male or fe if that's a male or female name. But welcome, Jace. Jace. I feel like that's a guy's name. I think right. Uh, anyway. Um. Man, man, there you go. Thanks, Chase. I've learned something today. Um, Paul, you're doing a workshops are going to be doing any in the future. I think having a mentorship with yourself could be very, very valuable. Um, my plan is to do mentorships in the future um, and a tutorial. Um, the tutorial first and then look into doing mentorships again um, just not quite at the moment because um, I'm still I'm kind of focusing a little bit more on my own work and stuff at the moment trying to work out new workflows and so on Um which in the long run will be better for you guys because I'll have more to actually teach. Um, but I would like to do a tutorial. Um, I think, and the the initially just a tutorial on ZBrush, just a you know how a, a, a tutorial to explain this workflow in a kind of nice, easy, digestible kind of manner, so that you know. Uh, well, it's, I guess for beginners, not quite, more intermediate, more people who have used ZBrush, but are trying to f kind of, you know, unlock it. They, they, they've they used it, but they just can't get what they're looking for out of it. And it's just to break that. and Because it, usually the problem there is just a workflow. 
you know, it's how you're making things that's actually giving you more hassle than anything else. And um, so there's tons and tons of stuff already on like, you know, just even on YouTube on, you know, good brushes to you, what brushes do, um, what, the different tools do all that kind of stuff there's tons and tons and tons of that so i kind of want to just give what seems to give people the most value from doing the streams and so on is teaching them a a workflow that will help them make what's in their head or will help them make the 2d that they're trying to work from um by kind of simplifying it and, and breaking it down into steps and so on so that's that's my that's my next plan and um, once I do that I'm not sure which I'll do from there because I'd like to I'd, I would like to do mentorships again um, but there's also, if I do that tutorial, then doing a further tutorial that goes beyond ZBrush into maybe some, you know, uh, rendering or uh, some texturing. Nothing, nothing really substantial, like nothing, you know, it, nothing super substantial in terms of rendering and, 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 and um, texturing, but a workflow to get your ZBrush sculpt um, textured and rendered the way you would see in my own portfolio um, you know just to just to, to add some extra fidelity or whatever to your to your to your renders to your characters so something like that I think um, So whether I do that first or the mentorship first, I'm not sure. But I want to make sure that before I do anything like that, that I, you know, have a, a firm grasp of uh, the pipeline that I'm happy, a pipeline that I'm really happy with. Like I'm, I'm the pipeline, the workflows that I use uh, in ZBrush. I'm completely content with um, like I'm confident in that and I'm confident in the success it has in terms of making it let's say easier to reach the desired effect the desired uh, uh, look of the character you're trying to make Trying to figure out on this sculpt if you can see his teeth. His mouth is definitely higher. Yeah, somewhere like Um, yeah, so that'll be that'll be the plan, I think, for now at least.
um, and let you know yeah I, I well if I'm doing mentorships again at some stage you know I'll, any, I'll post that kind of stuff on my Instagram anything any updates and what I'm doing I'll usually put that stuff on my Instagram Um, Jesus, I just read something there. I have to come back to that one. Um, strongest person in the world probably skips cardio, so you just <laughs> you just need to outrun them. Yeah, that's an I can't keep doing this. That's another Billy Connolly joke about a guy. It's like. National Geographic, two guys are recording a are, are video, are, uh, recording a line. This guy's got his, you know, his, his big camera, and the other guy's talking. And then the line kind of stands up and roars and kind of looks over at them. And the cameraman is there, and then he starts slipping on his runners. and the 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 guy presenting the guy talking says you've no idea how fast they are you'll never outrun a line and the cameraman says i just have to outrun you and i'll leave it there i'm not going to do any more but it's just that it's i'm having a weird night where just billy Connolly jokes keep coming up i know I, I can't even take full fault there i mean i couldn't have seen that coming anyway um Mike Tyson apparently once paid a zookeeper 10k, which I feel for Mike Tyson is pretty cheap, uh, to let him into a gorilla cage to fight it. Zookeeper declined. I'd have definitely let him in. I'd have, I'd have, 
I'd have said no problem I'd open the cage and I got my phone out and started recording because who doesn't want to see Mike Tyson fight a gorilla although no a joke it would have just been Mike Tyson getting torn to shreds by a gorilla that's not He probably declined because Mike Tyson. No, it was the same one. Yeah, anyway. That is insane. That is insane. But I've heard plenty of interviews with Mike Tyson saying that he was insane at that point in his life. I'm not sure what I want to do with this mouth because it kind of feels like it's open. But for now, we'll just we'll just not say we did. Uh, we'll leave the mouth as it is for now because I don't want to just. I don't want to be spending all day messing with the milk because we we'll spend too long on it. And that's no good. Sarah's saying nature doesn't give a crap, that's exactly it. Um, Jace, uh, I was named after an animation, that's awesome. Uh, Jace and the Wheeled Warriors, that's really cool. I was given my name because you can't shorten it. That's it. Um, Okay, maybe, please let me know. Yeah, and uh, future projects. Yeah, that sounds awesome to me. It, uh, uh, Tom Rittenhouse. Uh, it does look like his teeth are showing as he curls his lips. Yeah, kind of looks like he's getting a bit of a snarl. Um, yeah, I think he does, but that's going to require a bit of work. That because I'll have to like dig in and then rebuild the lips so let's just not do that here and now we can do that after the fact let's do a little trick with the topology brush create ourselves some eyelids down to one great split mask This was in the song. Back up, that looks too heavy.
your hook of the day right there. Um, this just seems. See, I actually didn't. I thought this sculpt. I didn't realize the sculpt would present as many kind of problems as it does. Um, like those, like, uh, so the part that it has a couple of parts, you can see here, like how close the eye is, but then how high up the eye is under this brow. Like if you, if you were, so if you imagine if this was in 3D and you rotated to the front, it kind of feels like you actually wouldn't see the eyeballs at all. In that case, do you know what I mean? And then here, yeah, you've got this teeth, but then it feels like the edge of the mouth goes all the way down here, which that can't be right. So it's got to finish like here. But like there's this hard line here. No. Actually, symmetry on Sorry, now I'm going quiet here. I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> trying to figure out what's the best way to approach this face shape because it's not how I initially imagined. So I need to rethink it. Which is something probably worth taking note of a little bit because I know like there was a state that's I think a big part of like when you get to a certain point and you can put you can see where you're going wrong I think that happens a lot when you start out and for the first good while is it's hard to see where you've gone wrong and you you can start in the wrong direction almost like you perceive it one way and then you get that down in 3d and it's not really working Um, and there was a stage you know when I was less experienced where I just kept going in that direction because I couldn't kind of see it and I didn't I did also probably didn't want to go back on what I had done um, so at some stage you just need to kind of learn and you need to keep an eye on that so you you know you need to be able to uh, be able to point out your own errors and, and correct them and and know when it's like okay I've, I've gone off I've gone off design kind of so I need to complete just like some it's often best 
like if that was like at this stage if I was doing that I'd have probably I'd have probably walked away you know went and got whatever cup of tea whatever just took 15 minutes and and came back to it because that can actually help um, to give you like a fresh eye and then you and then you, sometimes sometimes you come back and you're like oh god what was now I see it that hap that's happened to me a couple of times after a stream I, I think it's, it's hard when you're um, sitting straight just doing it if you're going in the wrong direction to like without stopping kind of see it it's, it's a little bit harder to do it that way you know not impossible now I'm not but just it can be helpful to be able to just walk off for a minute and kind of figure it out freshen up your eyes as they say Tyson might lose the fight but the gorilla would lose an ear yeah <laughs> might lose two um, as long as he got the money first yeah exactly yeah um, I'm reading from bottom to top yeah So that's definitely a bit better now. We're getting, I, I feel like it's more on track now that I can sculpt towards the design. I think before we were just, my initial idea of what the shape is in 3D was off. And I'd say what, a big part of probably what would throw, what threw me in that case likely is the fact that you're you're looking up at the face as well I, and so t okay so to get into that a little bit more so that what when you do for example in production if you're working on a film or working on whatever and you get 2d uh, you'll often find stuff like that will happen if the designer does like obviously Corey Smith didn't do this and be like because this is for Paul you know what I mean but if uh, this was the case and I got this as 2D that'd be fine like I'd, I'd work with it it's obviously an awesome design I'd be chuffed to get it um, but that's where you'd be like the, 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 the nature of 2D is you can just cheat and you wouldn't even necessarily realise you're cheating because of course you, you're not actually working out every volume when you're doing it in 2D so your volumes can be off in terms of it looks fine from that perspective or whatever like this this looks fine here like it doesn't look like anything's off which is you know as far as the 2D is concerned job done um, but when it's angled down and like I can you know stuff like the fact that I can't see the bottom of the nose even though it's angled so far down the fact that I can't see his like this part of his brow from this low down so it's like how low are his eyebrows to, to do that you know um, and of course it's just a case of you know, it's the nature of you know, you're doing a stylized sculpt, so you, but how stylized is it too? Like, how much of a brow do I make this, or how much of a just a, a basically just a hard edge, you know, that his eyebrows sit on, and just have that whole inside be like almost, almost all concave, where obviously. On an actual eye, on an actual brow, it's convex on the inside, and it becomes more concave on the outside because there's a bone here, and then you can actually get more flesh here. And especially as people get older, they, you know, it starts to weigh down, and you get that leaning over the eye. 
Um, I think we talked about about that in the last stream actually. Um, but anyway, even it's kind of tricky because of the left and right eye. Which way do I want to go with it? But it's all part of it, you know what I mean? You, it's it's kind of part of the fun of it too. You can just figure it out and it's problem solving. And just to be clear, it's certainly no, it's nothing, it's no problem with the 2D by any stretch of the imagination. like you know like a bit more of an edge like that you know not, not to that extent I want to I want some plane change can we get a link to your Instagram uh, yeah go yep so I've posted it in the chat there um, so yeah you just kind of keep at it until you figure it out it's part and parcel and it's probably good even for you guys to see like you know you might because Especially as a beginner, you might look at something like, you know, you watch the artists on something like Pixelogic's thing and you think, oh, they just know what they're doing and it never goes wrong and all that. I know I used to think that, like, where I'd struggle at certain points, I'd be like, oh, you know, those artists, they don't have that problem. But every artist does, at every level. There's no, there's no point where you just will just know exactly what to do and do it all right the first time. I don't think for any artist because it just means as you get better your bar gets higher um, so for sure you're making probably different mistakes but you know it's relative and there could be stuff there that I've seen you know for any any people that are newer to this uh, to sculpting and, and to ZBrush that, stuff that I changed there that maybe you didn't think was a problem and um, but you know over time you'll see more and more and see why and the same for me you know that's what I mean by it's relative the same for me I, I will still see more and it will change for me over time you know it's just how far down the road are you someone way for someone that's you know older wiser and more experienced than me will see more than me but they're also still trying to figure out how to fix their mistakes it just doesn't necessarily go away I'd say actually the one thing that can stop you there and this is a bad thing uh, for sure is if you let your ego get to you if you let your ego get in the way and um, that can stifle your learning that can stifle you from progressing I would say now his head looks mad long because I pulled it out here that's easy to fix
we're getting there now. Oh, 20 minutes over, actually. Oh, 20 minutes. Let's see when uh, Ash is on. Ash is on after me. So, don't want to eat into horror time. Um, but yeah, I think we're close there now. Although, see now I'm thinking, ah, oh, the brow still feels so low, but at the angle that it's supposed to be at, they're not. If anything, the eyes could be higher up in there, but then straight, it's not. So we're gonna have to change some things and kind of redesign to allow it to be, to work in 3D. Uh, there's no other way around it. But we're we're definitely close to the, the feel of that head now, you know? Uh, which is the point the feel of the feel of it I think is almost more important than you know to me it's certainly more important than lining up line for line if I tried to line up line for line on this it definitely wouldn't work in 3D like I couldn't look at it from the front and turn it if I want to render it do that type of stuff especially if I wanted to work in animation uh, where it's moving in shots and talking and so on Um. But for that, I'd have to neutralize the whole face. Anyway, that's all a different conversation. Um, so yeah, we'll leave it there. The idea will be to, like I showed you earlier, anyone who missed it, show it again. So this was last week's sculpt, and this is now with a bit of texturing done and some rendering. This is like, still very much work in progress uh lots more texturing to do like you can see the cat has nothing there done uh, but even everywhere else it, it all still needs more finessing and more more work the background is just a it's just a it's called an an ibl image based lighting for anyone who doesn't know so basically the render is pulling the the light from the image the light information from the image which is just a handy way to make a quick render um see how like that looks you know pretty well and it's just simple as that um and that will be the purpose of this guy when we do it and we'll be pulling obviously the information from the from the 2d here um making nice like gold and leather and cloth all that good stuff um get them in pause so this will be quite good actually to, to just show you, just so you can see it working from 2D and that get translating that 2D into 3D textured, finished sculpt. Um, so yeah. So. All that talking about Scotland and bears. What is this music? All this talking about Scotland and bears and all that. Uh, I let myself get a bit distracted that is not as much as I'd like to have gotten done today unfortunately but it's still okay, he's got the point uh, you've seen how I you know, I'm, I'm putting the pieces together so in terms of what you guys can get to see uh, the next stage is just the same moving on through the body as well and then extracting the claws once the body and the head is in a good place I can start extracting the claws and sculpting the claws in the same kind of manner so we will wrap it up there for today guys so remember like and subscribe if you enjoyed uh, any suggestions feel free to leave those in the comments um i'll actually I'll generally leave the old, for anyone who wants it we we're asking from my instagram earlier there's a, a link tree link i just dropped it in the chat there um and you can if you click on that all of my social medias is there so if you do want if you do want any of them feel free um <laughs> you're apologizing now for this no i i actually the the part i enjoy most about this because i can sculpt all the time but the part i enjoy most about this is talking to you guys i think that's why i talk too much um but i mean i i i used to try there was a stage where i tried to just not engage really with the chat i'd look up every now and again but i just i found i wasn't enjoying it as much anymore um so you know what it is um so i hope you guys enjoyed it anyway 
uh, and as I said like subscribe um, if you want to see more and you enjoyed it uh, I think Ashley Adams is up next I, I think so um, I'm nearly sure um, so stick around for her she's awesome uh, and there's loads more really really talented artists there uh, to learn plenty from as well and chat away with so um, it's always a pleasure guys I'll be back again in two weeks and until then I love you and leave you